Indexes, what do they mean? Let's take a closer look. Brandon Rogers, Bradshaw Financial Planning. Thanks for joining me today. Um, wanted to start pretty basic uh, and, and release some type of educational type video of, of things that a lot of our clients ask and also when we teach college courses this question comes up a lot is what are indexes what do they mean I mean we hear about them every time we turn on the TV at night and the Dow the S&P uh, the NASDAQ you know we always hear about them but what is what are they um, you know I'm a big history buff of course anybody knows that who's coming to my office but um, you know let, let's see where where these things are coming from how long they've been around and what makes them up right so let's differentiate a little bit there so um, first off let's get right into it the Dow Jones Industrial Average okay so obviously that's an index has been around for a long time since so it basically came together around 1885 uh, and it's really comprised of 30 industrial stocks um, you know back when they originally formed they were true industrial stocks uh, and and when you're looking at it again it's 30 companies and today, I mean, you've heard about a, a lot of them, of course. Uh, 3M, for example, American Express, Apple, uh, Boeing, uh, Caterpillar, Coke, um, you know, Exxon Mobil, Walmart, and then, you know, of course, everybody's favorite, Walt Disney. So, um, again, major companies that, that's, that's been around for a while. Actually, the one that's actually been down there the longest it, today now is, is Exxon Mobil. It obviously wasn't called Exxon Mobil back then, but it's been around since 1928. It's been on the index. Um, the committee basically is, is formed and, and controls who is on this index as, as a whole. Uh, the longest standing one that from the beginning was actually General Electric, but it was actually voted out this year. Uh, so, um, so it's no longer there. But some of the original companies, to kind of give you an idea of, the, of just kind of the historical nature of it, uh, were and all industrial companies. Again, American Cotton Company was one, American Sugar Company, American Tobacco Company, the Chicago Gas Company, the uh, National Lead Company, and the U.S. Leather Company. So these are some old companies that were, were the original components of the Dow, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, you know, average return, you're looking at it from, from 2000 range. From since 2000 to today, it's up about 6.9%. So, um, you know, diversified by 30 companies, uh, but you know, a good index you always hear about. Let's move on to the S&P 500. It is actually S&P Standard & Poor's created this index. There's similar as well as the Dow. There's a committee that sits down and votes on it. There's different parameters that the companies have to meet. And um, there's a 500, there's the 500, 500 different companies are, uh, are comprised of this index, and they're U.S.-based companies, of course. So uh, this index has been around since about 1957. Uh, that's when it actually reached its 500 company level. And, um, you know, dividends aren't included when you're looking at the indexes, so that's a different component to keep to the side. You know, that's something a lot of people think about. Um, but the general index you hear doesn't include dividends being reinvested or anything. Um, some of its major companies there, Google, AT&T, Duke Energy, Facebook, Intel, McDonald's, Starbucks, Walmart, Under Armour. So obviously very well-known companies. This is something that I think advisors really use and just people in the industry as a whole look at to really gauge the market. So it's the actual leading index and indicator of the actual business cycle. So uh, it's a very sought after index and very, watched very closely when you're looking at that. And that's something that you know, we as advisors also follow very closely to try to get a, a, an idea of what's going on in the market as a whole. Uh, when you're looking at its average returns, it's around the 2000 time frame until uh, today it is about 5.25% roughly. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea of, of, again, 500 different companies have your funds spread out, but they're all 100% equity. So still, still technically very risky, right? Um, lastly, let's talk about the NASDAQ, right? So it is actually uh, the newer one of them all, and it was created back in 1971. It was actually the first electronic exchange, uh, first one to be able to trade, you know, online basically. And, it, and it, it's a little different. This is an actual exchange, uh, something similar that's more well known. The New York Stock Exchange, of course, in, in, in New York City is there um, but you know NASDAQ is I'd say the second most sought after or, or recognized I guess I should say exchange out there so um, you know well, NASDAQ there's mainly technology okay so when you're looking at that you've got companies like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, eBay, Google uh, even got like Monster Energy drinks I think is on there as well so 
um, you know, very, uh, and that's about 100 companies. When you see that NASDAQ composite, that NASDAQ 100 companies is really what that's compromised of. So, you know, when we're looking at this, this is our things that we follow. Um, the NASDAQ itself, since it's 2000, it's returned just right over, right at 5%. Um, since that 2000 range. So again, I'm looking at since 2000 to today because we had you know, two major corrections within there. Um, so a lot of people think a lot of these returns could be double digits over time, but the reality of it is not. You've got your huge ups and downs, of course. So um, you know, again, a lot, of, a lot of good questions that we get and uh, I just want to educate from that and, and kind of give you some basis. You know, when we're looking at the portfolios, this is how we really invest uh, the the accounts here is all index driven, right? We're, we're a lot of ours are heavily weighted towards the S&P 500 and technology right now. So um, again, you know we can't control. We can only control the things that we can't control. So we can control the risk, and, and that's really what we really want to have dialed in. Um, the market's going to have its ups and downs along the way, and it's not going to feel good. But uh, emotions can can run high, especially obviously this year is uh, is a big difference. So. Um, again, just wanted to kind of give you some updates, give you an overview of those three different exchanges and how we look at them, how we use them, and um, you know, hope, hope you definitely found that helpful because we hear that a lot. Um, you know, just to wrap up, I also want to um, introduce, we got a new employee with us, her name's Brittany Ketchy. Um, she actually joined us this uh, about last month, and uh, she's about seven and a half years in the business and uh, really looking forward to her uh, joining the team and definitely make sure you say hey to her as you come in the office and maybe as you see her some of the events that we do as well. So I definitely want to welcome her. So, um, but as always, thank you for everything. Thanks for tuning in. Um, join us on social media. Check us out on our website. Uh, we have a lot of these uh, videos out there. And um, again, thanks for joining us. Let us know if there's anything else. But I'm Brandon Rogers with Bradshaw Financial Planning.